Amigos View Ministry. Thank you for watching Bobby's Briefings today. And I want to talk to us about despise not the day of small beginnings. God usually will start with something small and minute in order to give us to see if we're going to be faithful enough so he can give us something much, much bigger. And that's what we need to understand. God will start out with just a token, just a small thing. For example, Moses saw a bush burning and that was a token. So he turned aside to see what it was all about. And he got the treasure of leading the children of Israel out. And so God will sometimes do something very small. Uh, and sometimes it seems almost meaningless in our own life, but it'll have great impact upon the body of Christ. It's pretty amazing. Oh, one time, I was very busy traveling all over the world, going here and going there in gigantic crowds, big, big arenas full of people. And the Lord said, I want you to go to a house meeting. I said, a house meeting? Lord, I, I'm, I'm really too busy to go to a house meeting. I said, uh, how many people will be there? And he said, there might be 20, there might be 15, but I want you to go to the house meeting. I said, okay, uh, and I really didn't, just quite honestly, I thought it'd be a waste of my time to go to a house meeting when I could go to Colosseums with thousands upon top of thousands of people and minister the Word of God there. But uh, reluctantly, I was obedient to God. And I go down there to a, a house meeting. And in this house meeting, uh, some of the most wealthy people in America was there. Some of the most uh, uh, influential uh, business people were in that meeting and they were seeking direction. And God did some wonderful, marvelous things that you would have not, I would have not got to minister to them in some big auditorium, but in a home, in a house meeting there in the, in, in this city, uh, they were open and free and willing to to listen and, and to get counsel and guidance. And boy, it was so needful in their, in their life and in their ministry and in their uh, business. And God will do that. And he will give us wisdom if we'll just follow him. The Bible says he'll give us a tongue of the taught one that we'll know how to reply and respond to the people that say, how do we navigate these dark, dangerous days? And you and I need to walk in wisdom. I promise you this. If people find out that God will give them guidance and the direction and sound uh, principle, biblical precepts, they'll, they'll be the pathway to your door because people want guidance. They want to know the truth about the truth. And it's very important that we tell the truth about the truth. And that's what will set people free. You shall know the truth and the truth will emancipate you or set you free. And it says whom the sun sets free is free indeed. But what I'm getting at is sometimes uh, we, we, we try to categorize something, whether if it's great, big, and gigantic, that must be God. But sometimes God will move in a gigantic way through a little bitty thing. Pretty amazing. For example, this, this is a crazy illustration, but it's absolutely the truth. I was off in a meeting, and this man, a man from India, at that time was from India, came up to me, and he had his the dialect, and he had a bag of dirt had a Ziploc bag of dirt in his hands. And he said, well, the Lord had told me if I give this to you, you can analyze it. I said, what? He said, the Lord told me if I can give this to you, you can analyze it. Now, no human being had ever asked me to analyze uh, a, a bag of dirt. But so I said to the man, okay. And so I took the bag of dirt in my hands. And the moment my hands touched this bag of dirt, instantly I started seeing equations and I started seeing uh, numbers and uh, things like this. And so I just told him what I saw. And guess what happened? That bag of dirt came from the coastline of uh, Cambodia, I believe it was. And they ship shiploads of it over to America now. Uh, there into uh, San Diego and there to make silicon chips because it that that dirt that I picked up in that bag has the highest silicon content of any soil around so that's pretty amazing that guy now has a a, a, a a high rise office building in a, a Sydney, Australia. But isn't that amazing? God can do things. It's a just pretty, pretty wild and amazing. If we'll just be open and, I'll, and just be, uh, say, God, if you have something to say, uh, I'm, I'll be willing to say it and share it and uh, be as uh, uh, authentic as you can. Give the message God has given you to give to them. Don't try to spice it up. Don't try to jack it up. Just be as not just as just as informative as you can and just do it as low key as you can and God will use you in a marvelous mighty way. I've seen it happen in my own life uh, multitudes of times. But let me tell you something. Don't try to don't try to work something up. Just be you. Yielded to God, 
open and say, God, if you want to use me, here I am. And I've seen God use people in the most marvelous, wonderful ways. It's amazing. And God wants to do that. And it says, and multitudes believed when they saw the miracles Jesus did. We need signs and wonders and miracles to draw the multitudes. And God will certainly give it to us. Acts 1.8, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And you will be a witness unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and on the complete earth. He really will happen. So amazing. So I encourage you now. I want you to be obedient to God. Say, Lord, here I am. If you want to speak to me, please speak to me. And be be a very, very uh, 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 sensitive to what God says to you. Journal it down. Habakkuk says, write the vision, make it plain so people can run with it. And if you don't jot it down sometimes, especially in a night vision, if you don't jot it down, the devil will try to steal it before you can wake up. Jot down the notes where it'll stimulate your mind and you'll be ready to hear and follow what God has been saying to you. And he does speak to you. He'll speak to you in dreams, trances, visions. Marvelous. I want him to speak to me any way he wants to. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. That's what uh, Eli told uh, Samuel. said, the next time you hear that voice, you say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. So I say that in behalf of each one of us. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. So we want to be followers of the Lord, obeying him, saying what he wants us to say, being what he wants us to be, and be available to him. And so don't despise the day of small beginnings. He can do anything with anyone if we'll just surrender and let him have his way. There's a verse which has been going off in my mind for ever since the broadcast has been going on. And it's in the book of Joshua, where Joshua says, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I want you to make that a declaration in these times of shaking and all this. I want you to make a declaration. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Well, God bless you and God bless your family. Again, thank you for watching Bobby's briefings and Bobby's leadership lessons.